it's practical that means to study the more characteristics of replaced cholesterol. In theory, we already discussed what is a replaced cholesterol, what is the operating principle of replaced cholesterol, what is the velocity modulation of an electron wave, and how the replaced cholesterol tube is used as a microwave generator. So today we are going to discuss about the two important characteristics of replaced cholesterol, that is the more characteristics and the which is related to frequency characteristics also. So two characteristics we are going to draw. One is the frequency characteristics and the second one is the more characteristics. So before starting the experiment, just look at the uh, experimental setup for replaced cholesterol. So it consists of a cholesterol power supply as you know that for operation of replaced cholesterol it required the beam voltage and the repeller voltage. So that is given through the cholesterol power supply. Output of cholesterol power supply is connected to the replaced cholesterol tube. The replaced cholesterol tube which is used here as a generator which is used as a source of microwave which generates the frequency in the X band frequency range. However, all the equipments which are available in the microwave lab, all those are operating in the X band frequency range that is from 8 gigahertz to the 12 gigahertz of frequency. Then the next block, as you know that isolator is there in order to avoid any instability of the operation of the power supply. We are using here the isolator to allow the signal to pass only from port 1 to the port 2. Then after that there is a variable frequency meter is available. Variable frequency meter here we are using digital type of variable frequency meter which is used for measurement of it, or frequency which is propagating through the your class one bench. Actually this frequency meter is also operating from 8 gigahertz to 12 gigahertz. But you know that at a time only single frequency will propagate, right? So how to find that frequency? So we are finding that frequency by tuning your frequency meter. We are tuning the frequency meter in clockwise direction and we are observing the dip on the CRO. You can observe there that at only one frequency you will observe the dip on the CRO and that corresponding frequency is nothing but the frequency of operation. Okay? After this uh, frequency meter, there is a variable alternator in order to obtain the distortion based output. We are using the variable alternator. By doing this, you can change the magnitude of the output signal. Then there is a dilator. As the signal is modulated signal, so it will be required for detection of that signal. Because we are observing the output of the CR. The signal which is propagating that is in the gigahertz frequency range, but for dilator for your CRO, it can measure the signal in the megahertz frequency range. So that's why we have to demodulate that signal. So that is done with the help of this dye detector. So these different types of dye detector we are going to discuss in the last unit that is in the sixth unit. And finally, we are connecting output to the CR. Okay? We are giving the output to the CR. On the CR, we are getting the square wave, right? And accordingly, we are drawing the characteristics. Now what we are doing initially, uh, we are applying some signal from the uh, replaced platform, okay? Power supply. So from this power supply, we are very near the repeller knob. There are two knobs are there. One is a repeller knob and second knob is your beam knob. Okay. So here we are very near the repeller knob. Okay. So here first of all, we are making the frequency amplitude voltage of repeller voltage that is equal to say initially we are making it say as a 50 volts, right? So for this 50 volts, we are observing the output of the CR. So we are getting some square wave type of output on the CR, right? So measure the amplitude of this available voltage. So whatever the voltage is there, we note down that voltage work here, right? So I want to find out what is the frequency at this 50 volt repeller voltage. So what I have to do, I have to tune this frequency meter. I am tuning this frequency meter in a clockwise direction. Only at one frequency, I am getting here a dip of the CRO. Otherwise, for all other frequency, I am getting the output like a square wave. So, the point where I am getting the dip, so note down that frequency. So, that corresponding frequency is nothing but the frequency. So, you get something frequency in a gigahertz frequency range, right? Again, you increase here the voltage, repeller voltage. So, make it as a 70 volts. So, when you make it as a 70 volts, here you get some voltage on the CRO. Again, you repeat the same procedure where you are getting the dip, note down that frequency. Similarly, make a frequency is equal to say 80 volt. So, measure output voltage and its corresponding dip frequency. So, after some point, uh, you will get here no signal of the CR. Even though you are changing the repeller voltage, say you are making repeller voltage as a 90 volt, you are making it as a, this is just an example. We are making it as a 100 volt, we are making it as a 110 volt. But for that, you are not getting anything on the output, right? So, you are, you are not getting any output, so we are not considering say 90 volts to say 100 volts, then 110 volts. So, for this uh, constant voltages, we are not getting anything on the CR. 
other. That means you are getting just a straight line over here, isn't it? So here we are getting some output, then you are getting some straight line, right? So we are not taking that signal into the, uh, we are not taking that voltage into the concentration. Now next, further, if you may make it as a say 120, I say these are some hypothetical values, just for your explanation. Okay, so make it as a 120 volt, so you are getting some output voltage here, you are getting some corresponding frequency here, then we are making it as a 140 volt, then we are making it as a 150 volts, and we are finally we are repeating the cell process. After this 150, again you will observe that you are not getting anything for say 160 volt, again for 160 volt, say for 170 volt, again for 180 volt, you are not getting anything on the CR. But again, if you make this as say 200 volt, then again you will start making the, you are observing the output voltage of the CR, okay. So if you draw the corresponding graph, that is the mode characteristics and the frequency characteristics graph, then you will observe the graph like this. So here, say, here is your repeller voltage, right. So this point is your repeller voltage. This is also repeller voltage. So this is your output voltage that you are observing from the CRO and here is your frequency, right? So initially if you make say something 50 volt, you will get some millivolt signal over here, right? Say so here it is 0, say this is 50 volt. Then if you make it as a 70 something, your voltage will get increased. Okay, output get increased. After that you will get output like this. So your graph will be, if you join these three points, you will get a graph like this. Now you have to find out the frequency characteristics and frequency. So for this point also, we have observed there the tuning. Okay, we have given this frequency meter and we have observed the tube. So here we are observing the tube, so just uh, note down this value. Somewhere here we get this value. Then for this also, we note down this value, frequency, because this is frequency in gigahertz, right? So here we get something here. And if you join this point, we get this. So this is called as a frequency characteristic. But I have told you that say after 50, 60, 70, say for 90 volt I am not getting anything, for 100 volt I am not getting anything, for 110 volt even I am not getting anything. But after that again if I start from 120 volt, I will get here this signal like this. So here I will get some voltage, again here some voltage and at this point some voltage. So it is respect to frequencies are like this, that is uh, obtained after the tuning, so it is like this. Okay? Then again here nothing is there. So here you will get a like this mode characteristics. And basically you will get here three uh, three modes. Okay. Practically you will get here the three modes for the electric response. So this characteristics is called as a mode characteristics of electric response and this characteristics.